competition in U.S. soccer. Derek Gebhardt gets us kicked off. Locomotive in their blue kits with their blue shorts going left to right on your monitors. And forward Madison FC in their pink kits with their white shorts going right to left. A strong lineup put out there by Daryl Shore as he comes into this game. And he talked about Lori, how serious they were about this game, how big a moment this could be for this club to move in to the third round of the U.S. Open Cup. Yeah, and that was going to come down to the, his team getting off to a really great start. They haven't been impressed with how they've been starting these games as of late. Scored an early goal, their last match in the U.S. Open Cup. But other than that, it has just been kind of lukewarm in terms of how they're getting off on that front foot. So tonight he's going to look to rip, to amend that and see if they can get after this El Paso team quickly. Brian Silvestre gets the start in goal. 26-year-old out of Hollywood, Florida, was in the USL League One Team of the Week this week after just his second start of the year. Injured about two weeks before the season started, but now getting back into form and funny enough, he is coached as a goalkeeper coach by Ryan Coulter, who started in the games that Silvestri was injured for. Coulter, at 30 years old out of London, is the pseudo goalkeeper coach, as well as one of the backup goalkeepers on this team. Tackle one there from Meshach Jerome. Madison FC established in 2018 making their debut in the professional soccer scene here in 2019 bringing the game back to Wisconsin They've got a number of local players in their team and one in Carl Schneider getting the start here right here at left back University of Wisconsin grad and Madison native. As locomotive goes inside out here. Opportunity coming and it's knocked away off the end line. And that's a good build up play early on by El Paso. Just finding some room in between those two lines and then spraying it out wide. Good look. Dynamic play getting everyone involved. James Kiffey here the starting left back. We'll bomb forward on that play. We'll take this corner kick. Giffy, a longtime USL veteran, spent last year with the Charlotte Independents. He curls this one and it bounces in the box, but no one on the end of that one. Partita now, one of those two in central midfield alongside Ryan getting his first career start. And the foul will go against forward Madison. Toyama there out of Chiba, Japan. Getting dragged down, his third start of 2019. Still looking for his first goal. See JC Banks dropping in to pick up possession. It's gonna be Charged Earth running this midfield from behind Nunez. Turnover there, a chance to counter. First foul of the game. And you can already feel, David, the, the tempo in this game. It's going to be high energy. Both teams going to want to keep possession. Going to have to weather some of the storms. There are long strings of not having possession and how they can deal with that. It really, it's going to come down to the battle in that midfield. And this man, Richie Ryan, is going to have a lot to say about this game. Gets it forward and... El Paso back on the attack. The deflection shot falls. Now a chance for this forward Madison side to come out for forward Madison. They're playing in a brand new league. Coach Shore said no one really knew what the level of USL League One was going to be. So he said with our budget not the most, we believed we could go out and build a team that could compete 
for a playoff spot in the USL Championship as a barometer to figure out where they needed to be in USL League One. And so he believes they've got a group that can compete in games like this. Yeah, and they've already showed that playing against their rival last week in New Mexico, getting that tie. That's a big point in terms of coming into this tournament, having some momentum, having confidence, and then playing these midweek games gets a look for other players to opportunities for them to come in, show what they can be on the field, and also just improves the depth of your team, how you can be more, more versatile throughout. Try, try some players in some different positions. Navarro up to help in the attack one of the players on these two teams that played last year in Florida a lot of players from Miami from Jacksonville these two coaches either brought with them or stole from each other to bring to the other team as they build these two franchises from the ground up turnover here chance to break Paulo jr. one of those Florida guys, this ball clipped over the top and out and taken by Forda. Jerome, playing at the center of that back line. You can see Kiffy here will have license to play higher up the field and his fullback partner, Yuma, on the other side as El Paso looked to play through him in the attack. And that'll be the key, David, because both of these teams like to keep possession. They like to be able to allow their fullbacks to get forward, create numbers up, up situations in that attacking third. But if you lose the ball quickly or turn it over, then you're not going to be able to get numbers in. So it's about managing the game. If you have two similar teams, just seeing what the other one's going to give you and then work through that, weather those storms as the game goes on. Now we can see these two teams right now feeling each other out, trying to see where the space will be and how they'll match up, never playing against each other before. Two new franchises, so not a lot of tape out there yet on these sides. Howard Madison in a good run of form over the last few weeks draw on the road against Chattanooga last weekend. They got their first ever home win the week before against TFC2 at Brees Stevens Field in Madison, Wisconsin. The game before that, a 0-0 draw against Greenville, which was their home opener. As Kiffy serves this one in again. Toyama wins this one. And now Banks. A mistake there, fortunate to get himself out of it. So this El Paso locomotive side, you mentioned it, a big 2-2 draw against New Mexico. Now a four match unbeaten run for this team. Wins over Colorado Springs and Areno in that run. All started with a 0-0 draw against Texas rivals Austin Bold. This cross alive on the ground, calmly handled there by Schneider. A good start right now by forward Madison. Getting numbers behind the ball, not letting El Paso penetrate them in any way, only allowing some space out wide and then dealing with that service. Clipped up over the top. And for a team that wants to come out and show that this league, them being in League One, but they can compete with any USL championship team, and these first 10 minutes have been pretty smooth, looking to have a variety in the attack. When they win it right away, keep in possession, but if not, can they find it over the top and look to spring on transition? Forward Madison trying to fly the flag for USL League One. to the next round. They beat Bavarians SC from Milwaukee 2-0 in the first round. As we showed you. An easy trip that time for their Open Cup game. This a little bit longer. Nunez. 
play that ball into the feet of Don Smart. We do see Ryan getting a lot of touches so far at the base of the midfield, which is good news for El Paso. Yeah, something that they want to play through, and even at the beginning of the game, we talked about how it's going to be important for him to be communicative in there, be a leader, especially having those younger guys in there that haven't gotten a start until this game. Just dictating the tempo, but also settling players down, getting on the ball as much as possible, and be a link between that back line and the attack. He has some deceptiveness that we've already seen to his game. You know, he'll kind of lure you to sleep in terms of like switching the point of attack, just being simple with his passes, and the next thing you know, just kind of a no-look pass that penetrates, breaks a couple of lines of defense, and finds the striker's feet. This man Kiffy has shown he can be a factor already. Lori, when you look at two teams, you've played on expansion teams in your career. What is, what's it like that first month or two when there is no core, there's no group that's been together in that city with that team ever before? You gotta rely on some of your veteran players that have been there, played in many different leagues, have played at different levels to just provide that cohesiveness. And at the same time too, when it comes to football, if you understand, it's easy to communicate on the field with the ball, right? So if you have similar players and you have a general understanding and principles that the, the coach has implemented, then the game speaks for itself. And it's really just about working together, communicating out there in terms of when you're gonna press, when you're gonna drop off, getting tight as a unit. Do you do lots of icebreakers? <laughs> lots of escape the rooms, wear, wear the name tag for the first week? I, I tried not to. <laughs> These two sides, part of what has become a growing soccer landscape in the United States. This is the biggest U.S. Open Cup ever, the most professional teams to ever enter the U.S. Open Cup as USL League One opens up with their first 10 teams and the USL Championship expands to 36 teams across two conferences. The sport as strong as it's ever been and how exciting that we can bring every single Open Cup game to you on ESPN Plus this year. Already seen some incredible upsets. We've seen some great performances, some gorgeous goals. And we are excited for another two hours or so of soccer for you here. Ryan takes it quickly to the feet of Resende. Resende with a dangerous curling ball. It's knocked down at the far post by Partida and away by Schneider. This is a fantastic ball in. Just a little bit of movement to separate himself. Whips this ball in, swerving behind that back line. That was enough to get that corner kick. So the third corner kick of the game already coming up for El Paso Locomotive FC, the home side here in the second round US Open Cup match. Kicked away at the near post by Banks. Nunez puts some pressure on. He and Paulo Jr., neither of them went to the ball. And El Paso get back in possession through Herrera. And that's an opportunity for both of these teams to, to win the ball quickly if they do get on the same page. Lock them into one side, squeeze the field, don't let them out because the width is where you're going to find some joy tonight. There's so many numbers in that midfield. We'll see that outside of that field. Player's gonna be able to roam free. One knocked away. Paso Locomotive, taking their time now. This is Castellanos here on the ball. Come 
Long ball over the top. And Jerome heads back. El Paso Locomotive in no rush here in their first ever U.S. Open Cup game. Happy to knock this one around. One team that's not new to the soccer scene, the U.S. women's national team. They are preparing for the World Cup. They'll face off against New Zealand this Thursday in St. Louis. For tickets, visit ussoccer.com or watch, a lot, watch it live on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. The U.S. women's national team getting ready for a World Cup. It's going to be the biggest event of the summer over in France. Competitive a pool as we've ever seen at the women's level. Lori, you got out at the right time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Lose in the final against Japan and then the following year win in the Olympics and then get out. <laughs> yeah. It's always nice to end on a trophy. Mm -hmm. I can say as someone who played in high school. <laughs> Paso, very calm and composed right now in possession. Coach Lowry starting to get his principles across here. Beautiful work out of that corner. And now Kiffy flying forward once again. This one bounces over the top. Fortunate in the end for Diaz to see it roll out. Mark Lowry out of Birmingham, England. Taking the same task that Daryl Shore took in trying to build a franchise from the ground up. Fortunately for this team, they've got good relationships across the U.S., but also across Mexico, being right on the border. They've already brought players in on loan from FC Juarez, as well as Toluca, as we see Partido on loan, starting in this game. Also got a lot of experience in this team. Kiffy, Jero Meshach, Jerome. Batman Yuma starting at right back, wearing the captain's armband in this one. He'll be suspended for the next USL game against the Sacramento Republic FC. Coming up this weekend, received a red card in the match against New Mexico. You got to think, Lori, for him, this is an opportunity to go 90 minutes because he's got the most time to recover and rest after this one. Yeah, absolutely. And this is why these games are so valuable, too. I mean, I mean, we have talked endlessly about the opportunities it provides, right? But, like, it keeps you in the rhythm. If you're going to miss a game, unfortunately, it allows you to have that momentum, keep you in the rhythm of game time after time. And so for him, it's, it's fortunate that they have this U.S. Open Cup midweek. Mark Lowry hasn't gone heavy in rotation. We saw Fresno FC, a fellow USL championship side, go heavy in rotation earlier today against an NPSL side, and they squeaked out a one-goal win. You can see El Paso and Coach Lowry knows the threat that forward brings on the road. Ball clipped in over the top. The first chance of the game. And forward Madison FC takes a 1-0 lead on the road in the Open Cup. And this is a great little run by Paulo Jr. to get in line and then just clips this one in. Looks like it could have been a handball, but it comes off the chest of Toyama. Fantastic. All he has to do is redirect it. There's enough speed on that ball, enough pace, perfectly weighted. And what a fantastic job just to get a piece of his body on it, redirect that into the goal. And this is a fabulous start for Madison, especially coming into this game when you haven't been proud of how you've started games, especially just with your performances, getting things down on the ground, keeping possession. And really the one question mark in Daryl Shaw's starting lineup was that outside attacking left spot and Toyama, they felt like his speed could be a factor in this game, hasn't scored all season and he gets the goal. And what a beautiful clipped cross from Paulo Jr. at full speed, showing you his quality. Well, not only that ball, but then there's the time run to be able to take that first time as well. Good little ball in behind on the ground. Just fantastic build-up play. And that's an area where they felt like they could get after him too, is just in the outsides. We know how good 
Ryan is number six in there for El Paso, but there's space on the outside of him where they can find and exploit that area. And shout out to everyone from the flock who's enjoying this one <laughs> at the Flamboyance team store. They must be dancing and singing right now. We've seen the party that they've brought to Breeze Stevens Field in their first two home games. And this team right now being out-possessed 25-75 by El Paso on the road in the first 20 minutes. And they've got a 1-0 lead. Yeah, it's amazing. And they knew coming in that they might not see much of the ball because El Paso likes to keep possession as well. So how are they going to deal with that? Wanting to come out with a good start, not having much of it. But they've weathered the storm and they've used their defensive presence to kind of dictate the tempo. And as soon as they win it, they're looking to go forward. And this is the beauty of one game cup knockouts. It doesn't matter what league you play in, what your budget is, where you sit in the standings. It's 90 minutes. It's all that goes on between the lines for forward Madison. They've been growing over the last few weeks in league play. The first time ever this group's playing against the USL Championship side. And right now they've got the lead and they look as composed as we've seen them coming off the back of that goal. Yeah, and as soon as you score goals, that's what it can do. Raise your confidence. They already came out fired up, high energy. Had a good game plan, get this early goal. And now we're seeing them get right on the ball keeping possession, giving it a little taste of their own medicine to El Paso. Castellanos with Partida, Partidos and Herrera. All three of them getting their first ever start in that midfield alongside the experienced Richie Ryan. Crunching tackle there. Toyama, the goal scorer, is still down back behind the play. Daryl Shore, you can see on that sideline, furious. That play was allowed to go on. Toyama there gets laid out, and you'll see uh, at the end of that one, Partida made sure Toyama stayed down after the play. We've got a free kick coming here. And the first yellow card of the game. Looks like it's going to go to Navarro. Well, this insertion of Toyama into this game to, to utilize his speed down that right-hand side has proven to be a good one, already causing so much trouble, getting the assists, and here drawing this free kick. A little surprise. These two teams friendly playing it out, a goal, and now all of a sudden we've seen three crunching tackles in our first yellow card of the game. <laughs> exactly. U.S. Open Cup for you. Forward Madison have turned up the heat on this one. We've got a game for you. Anything can happen in this tournament. We've seen amateur sides beat professional sides. We've seen upsets. We've seen four, four thrillers. We've seen goals galore. What does Nunez have up his sleeve here? The Panamanian International. He goes short on this one. Smart with the shot. It's blocked by Jerome. <laughs> goes out off of this forward side. And I like the variety already. Instead of just whipping that one in, looking to go short, why not take a shot from outside? Mix it up a little bit on those set pieces. We know how dangerous they can be and what a game changer. Jose L. Nunez, he runs that attack for this side. 14 caps for Panama on loan from his Panamanian club Universitario. He's been in big competitions before, playing in the 2017 Gold Cup in CCL with Arabe Onido as well. Jose El Nunez, a lot of importance on his shoulders for coach Daryl Shore. And he feels like this is a young player who's gonna get a chance to express himself out there on the field. And in a game like this, just provide balance in that midfield as well, because they knew coming into this game, El Paso likes to str shrink the game, tighten, get tight defensively, trap teams in, and they're gonna have to have some balance to be able to break that pressure. And that's gonna come from Nunez, just his understanding to stay out of that, see if they can utilize him as an outlet, and then find the other side of the field when they break that pressure. Partido working down this wing. 
the end couldn't get any power on the cross. And now forward Madison looking to play through the pressure. A collision there. An opportunity to get out and running here for Nishad. He cuts by the first man. He's got numbers around him. Toyama looking for his second goal. Puts it on a plate. And it's 2-0. Forward Madison rampant on the road. And the goal here for Christian Diaz. And what a goal this is. They catch him on the break. Quick transition. Good run here by Mashad. Dishes off, and then this is a terrific little ball, weighted over the back line there, and then ops across this one. Toyama into Diaz's path. All he has to do is place it in the back of the net. But again, a fantastic little chip ball in behind. Nothing that back line for El Paso can do. And then smart play just to play this along that goal line. And just like that, 2-0 for this away team. Forward Madison. El Paso right now, 91 degrees. So a hydration break for these two teams. But, Lori, this wasn't exactly what we expected. Not huge underdogs is this forward Madison side, but they come out here. They've been outpossessed 75 to 25, which doesn't mean everything. But they lead 2-0. They have been efficient in their chances. And efficient is the exact word, David, because as soon as they have it, they're smart with their passes, they're precise with their passes, they're finding the open player. I mean, we've already mentioned El Paso likes to squeeze, so they've been able to find the outlet passes quickly. And then when it's on, go direct, be penetrative, and it's two fabulous goals that look very different. So exciting for them going forward because they know they have some variety in the attack, and they're not going to look to utilize just one way so fabulous start. You can't ask, write this up any better for Daryl Shore's team. And for that man, Mark Larry, you can see the worry on his face. How does he now get a team that's controlling possession? They're doing a lot of good things. Ryan has broken the lines a few times. How does he get his team back in it? Well, we know in soccer that a 2-0 lead is the worst lead no, you can have. No, <laughs> don't do it. I'm doing it don't because it do is. It. You start to get a little complacent. But really for El Paso, just continue to play their game, play through the midfield, when they're on the ball, take care of it. We know this El Paso side has some weapons on the bench as well if they need a little bit more support. Jerome Kiesewetter and the USL Team of the Week, two goals against New Mexico this weekend. Former U.S. International on the bench, as is Omar Salgado, the El Paso native, the first ever signing in this team's history, the 25-year-old out of the Guadalajara system, who was the first draft pick by the Vancouver Whitecaps in MLS history. So a lot of offensive firepower on the bench for Mark Lowry, if he chooses to go for it, but he's not gonna make a sub here in this first half. So the players out there, they gotta figure it out to at least get to halftime down 2-0. And if you can get in these next 15 minutes, if you can really cut down this lead at least by one, then you're off in a good position going into halftime. But it's not time to panic net yet. There's so much time left in this game. You believe in your squad. You know what they can do. We said it in the open. They're on the rise. They're starting to build together. They're building momentum. And now this is a good test for them coming into this Open Cup game, finding themselves down 2-0. Not a typical position that they find themselves in. So. Who's going to lead them out of this? One step at a time. Four match unbeaten run for this El Paso locomotive team, including their first two of their first three wins in their franchise's history. Right now they are behind here as Ryan sprays that one just a little too long. This is where Ryan, though, he's going to play an important role because it's exactly what we were talking about. When they start to lull this Madison team to sleep with their passes, keeping possession, he's the one that can spray those more penetrative passes, little clips over the top. Clearly, that one went sailing out, a little too much on it, but find those little open gaps. It almost feels like glory for this Madison team. They 
are more comfortable when you're, they're put under immediate pressure. It looks like their first touch, their one touch passing, as we saw in that counter for the second goal, they're happier to do that than to knock it around and try and break down a low block. Yeah, and even after we were talking with Daryl Shore, though, I mean, he was adamant that they want to keep possession, but you're right. I mean, as soon as they, like, win the ball, they're good at finding a more penetrative pass, finding that open pass on the opposite side, and it really has worked well for them to spring a quicker attack. The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup is U.S. Soccer's a national championship. A nice long shot there. You can catch all the action, goals, highlights, and exclusive features on Twitter and Instagram at Open Cup and on Facebook at the official Open Cup. Why not? You're up 2-0. A bit ambitious, but I was going to point out to, that that is an unbelievable position for Nunez in there. That's what we're talking about, getting on the half turn on the outside of Ryan for El Paso. There's space to be had there. A dangerous deflection keeps this ball in here for El Paso. Lori, did you ever feel that when you played in midfield of when a team pressed you, it felt more comfortable because you knew one clean pass and you break the whole team open? It's difficult when teams set back and you want to play a high tempo and how to break them down. And sometimes you're learning yourself to sleep because it's like you're waiting for those moments, trying to shift teams. So absolutely. I mean, good on Madison for pushing the pace early on. And they have pushed the score as well. A 2-0 lead for the USL League One side. Coach Darrell Shore said, we built a squad that we think could compete for a playoff spot in the USL Championship, and this is an opportunity for them to prove that. And they have come out here and put on a show so far for us and for their flock. We had the privilege of talking with Coach Daryl Shore earlier in this week about this game. And, and one thing I love talking to him about when you could just feel his energy, the confidence he had. He knew this was going to be a good matchup, a similar matchup. So it's really going to become come down to those small details and who could impose their style better. But at the same time, you could tell he was fired up. He understood. He broke down this Ford Madison team, excuse me, this El Paso team. And he's gotten his team fired up right from the get go. Banks launches that one. These two teams looking for a chance to move on to the third round of the U.S. Open Cup here at Southwest University Park in El Paso, Texas. The winner of this game will head to either St. Louis or Des Moines for their third round matchup. Right now, Forward, Madison, they are in the driver's seat for an opportunity to go one step farther. You see Russell drawing that foul there. You can hear this El Paso crowd trying to inspire their team. Right now, the locomotive, they've played with energy. They've covered ground, they just haven't had that either a little bit of flair in the final third or the strength to make that big tackle on the other side. Yeah, and in the attacking third, there hasn't been much threat as of yet. You gotta credit. Forward Madison here. You gotta credit them. Yeah, you gotta credit them to pick and then choose their times when they're gonna press, keep them locked in that defensive half, but then also drop back, stay tight as a unit and not let any passes go through them. Make them play out wide, see if they can break them down through service. Nunez, running out wide, pick up a little bit of the ball. Partido with an acrobatic clearance. And the handball will go against Toyama. What a game to start this one out for Jiro Toyama. A goal and an assist, his first in either category of 2018, his first year of fully professional soccer. He's played with Laredo Heat, KW United, FC Wichita, the Brooklyn Italians, a number of NPSL and PDL sides. But this is his first opportunity to play in the full professional game in USL League One, a brand new league. He's taking advantage of his starting spot here in El Paso.
Ashray will go long here. American born Haitian goalkeeper. Final 10 minutes of this first half here. You mentioned that 2-0 lead for forward. How do you continue to play your game? Continue to be threatening. And make sure you go in with a, a two-goal lead to halftime. We be smart defensively. Make sure you're not giving anything away. So you might need to be a little bit more conservative, but then when you do go to press and lock them in, you've got to go as a unit. If you can't get stretched, if you're going to get stretched, then they're going to pick you apart, Madison is, because they're going to find the likes of Ryan in there. He's going to be able to spray balls around easily. So collectively as a unit, whether you're pressing or sitting back in a little bit of a lower block, you just maintain your shape there, and then you can attack out of those positions. And you can see Schneider coming forward there from left back, Toyama, dropping back and covering his space. So having that defensive cover for this forward Madison FC squad in their pink kits with the white shorts, the El Paso Locomotive FC, and they're all blue jerseys and blue shorts hosting and playing in the inaugural U.S. Open Cup game. It has been a first half to forget. But fortunate for them, they've got plenty of time left to work their way back into this one. It's winner go home in this tournament. We've got 90 minutes to make a difference. If not, we head to 30 minutes of extra time, no golden goal. And if we're still tied after that, we would go to a penalty kick shootout. El Paso trying to have this deficit. That shot's deflected. And it will go out for an El Paso corner kick. And one thing that's important to note too is for Ford Madison to still play with courage. Don't start to play that you don't want to lose. Keep attacking, keep the ball when needed. Giffy's had a number of set piece opportunities. We've seen one or two bounce in the middle of the box. He serves in another one. Silvestri, not taking any risk this time, comes out and handles it himself. A big pickup for this Madison team in Brian Silvestri. Spent last year with the LA Galaxy on the bench in Major League Soccer. Got a couple starts in USL, but a guy Daryl Shore has known for about five or six years now. Sylvester, an up and down career, skip college to go play the Vancouver Whitecaps residency. He's been with the US youth teams. Struggled to find his place as a permanent starter in the professional game. Now getting the opportunity to be the goalkeeper in the inaugural season for the forward. Another dangerous cross in there from Ford Madison, just bringing that out wide. And again, it's Nunez in there. That's finding that little open space. Dishing those balls out wide. The first signing in forward history, Don Smart takes this corner kick. Jerome heads it away from his own goalkeeper. Banks is over to recover it. And he clips this one in. An open header for Paulo Jr. on the top of the six. And another fantastic look. This is a great ball in. Just having to, Paulo Jr. just having to go, bend backwards a little bit. Can't get a good look on it to sail that one wide. But unmarked in the box. Paso dominating possession in this game. Madison dominating the chances and the score line. They've been efficient and lethal when they've had to. And you, you gotta think for Daryl Shore, this is a perfect first half. You haven't overextended yourself. You haven't really put a ton of miles on your legs, heavy running, and you've got a 2-0 lead on the road. It is a fantastic, this is one of the best first halves we've seen by a team. Mm -hmm. True performance, everyone putting in the work defensively, getting involved into the attack as well. We knew Nunez was going to be an important role in there, and he's done just that, pulling the strings, dictating that tempo. And really, they, El Paso has no answers to any of this. I mean, they're trying to keep possession, but there's just no room to play through Ryan as much as they would like. Difficult to play any penetrative passes. They cough it up easily, and then it's Madison springing that ball out wide. Rashad pushing forward again. He set up the second goal. 
now runs into a wall of blue. Navarro comes away with it. Puts his goalkeeper under a little bit of pressure. And it's amazing that there's no openings right now for El Paso, but when Madison gets the ball, J.C. Banks has no one within 10 yards of him to play out of his own back. And Mashad's doing a good job of getting on that ball and making runs, dribbling at that back line. But you're right, there, El Paso's starting to commit numbers four, trying to help get numbers around the ball, but it's quick, easy turnovers, and that's been the difference, is the turnovers in the middle of the field. And we're not seeing that from Ford Madison, and as soon as they are, they're clean with their touches, and they know that the space is out wide, and they're just looking for that pass. This team set up right now perfectly for this game. Forward Madison FC. Right now, a little bit of a dream to start this game, and they're hoping they don't wake up from it. Nishad can't find a teammate. Now, Madison put a little pressure on, and Nunez does the defensive work to come back and win possession. And fantastic work by him. And immediately he finds a dangerous pass, and Madison's back on the attack. Paulo Jr. already has an assist. It was the same look as that opening goal on the other wing. Right now, the counter press from El Paso, non-existent. When they turn this ball over, Madison forward can do anything they want. And Nunez starting to feel it here in midfield. Oh, stop it. That was that touch was amazing. This is what Daryl Shore <laughs> signed up for when he brought him in on loan. He knew the experience he had with the Panama national team. He was just looking for a place to refresh his game a little bit in a new atmosphere and a new challenge. And Nunez on what has arguably the biggest stage so far this year for this forward side is having his best game. And you can feel it throughout this squad, the energy, the excitement, the confidence they're having on the ball. And then that gives you the confidence to try those little tricks in the midfield. Not worried if you do give up the ball because you can get numbers in behind. Everyone's committed to their role, committed to their individual battle out in that field. And this has been a fun first half to watch for Ford Madison. Another turnover from this El Paso side. It was good interchange once again from forward Madison. Final few moments of this first half. The inaugural US Open Cup game for El Paso Locomotive FC in their first year of existence, hosting a USL League One team. That season's, that league's debut season in forward Madison FC, putting on a clinic right now of how to get a road result in a cup game. They've defended comfortably in numbers. They've been direct, but intelligent on the counter attack. And they've got a two goal lead right now. If you're Mark Lowry for this El Paso side, you come into the halftime locker room like this. They've played some good soccer. Do you, are you encouraging? Are you positive about what's gone on saying one will come? Or is it laying into this team and demanding more? Well, I think it's a bit of both. Demanding a bit more from every individual on there, making sure, again, these are two very similar style teams. So it's really about a cat and mouse game and see if they can start to employ what Ford Madison is doing to them. And that means getting numbers behind the ball, not letting those areas outside of Ryan be exploited by them. And just make sure you get tight. And when you win the ball, can you play forward quickly and then bounce it back and then get some numbers forward? Because right now, they're trying to go forward quickly, but it's just with one or two players. And Ford Madison has that covered. Just get your players tight. You can lay into them a bit in terms of, like, we need to step this up. There's still 45 minutes of play. But then also keep doing what we're doing. Keep ticking away. We have the personnel to break this team down. Madison right now. They're the ones who are forever forward. Carrying that moniker of Wisconsin and of this team. And they have played this game to perfection so far. So we enter our minimum of two minutes of stoppage time. That corner kick flashed in. 
Nunez trying to keep possession here for his team. Beautiful nutmeg. Back on the ball, the back heel. Stop it, Nunez. And now a shooting chance for Smart. And it's off the goalkeeper's hands and out. And this is the best example of a team that is feeling it tonight. Can't do anything wrong. Nunez just pulling the strings in there. Such crafty nastiness on the ball. Everybody on the same page. Big time save by, save by Forda to keep this one out of the back of the net and not allowing it to be 3-0 going into the second half. This corner kick goes over everyone's head. As you said, the reaction from Funda. Just furious there with the awareness and effort from his side. And in plays like that for this Madison side, it's like they've got one more person in every situation, but yet they haven't been exposed defensively at the back. Uh, they are just doing a fantastic job of getting numbers around the ball. They like to play shorter, quick passes, but what I like is they're playing it in quickly. If it's not on to play over the top, playing into the feet of a striker who's laying it back and that buys time for players to get in, uh, their fullbacks to get in and start to overload those numbers. What a performance it has been from Paulo Jr. up top not just the assist, his ability, as you said, to hold possession, the 30-year-old out of Brazil, four goals last year for Penn FC in the USL Championship. Many guys, you see that header go over the top. Yuma on the far post thought it was gonna land to him for a volley. Apollo Jr., one of those many guys who knows they can play with a team Locomotive FC, we knew that they would make some substitutions, and they've done one right out of the halftime whistle. Jerome Kiesewetter, who's got four goals on the year, two goals this weekend against New Mexico, is into the starting lineup. The German-born U.S. full international, just 27 years old. His first year on this side of the ocean professionally they're spending last year in the two Bundesliga with Fortuna Dusseldorf. So Ke Kiesewetter comes on. A little bit surprising for Resende, who, Lori, when we were talking at halftime, you felt was the only one of the attacking pieces for El Paso that had played well in the first half. Yeah, he was a bright spot for them. Getting down that left-hand side, he's the one that played that ball in that led to that only really attempt on goal for El Paso. But I felt like he was trying to move around, get himself in good positions, cause a little bit of trouble for that back line, at least with his busyness in there. So yeah, a little unexpected there, but we'll see what Kisa Wetter can do. See if he provides some more energy up top. So a new partner now for Gebhard to play off of up top, hasn't had a ton of opportunities as Gebhard in the attack. El Paso locomotive coming out here, dominating possession throughout the first half. The total number in the end, 70-30 in possession for this team. That 70% possession led to one shot in the entire half for El Paso and this man Kiesewetter after two goals this weekend he'll come on with confidence speed you know he'll attack that back line for forward Madison and maybe bring a little bit of what this team's lacking in the final third and that's what you hope especially an outlet pass at least to be able to spring more of an attack because as you mentioned David it just because they had 70 percent attack or possession they weren't going anywhere with that possession it wasn't breaking down Ford Madison at all so it'll be Ryan to take this set piece knocked up in the box dangerous opportunity here the forward a little lax in there defending Ryan right back on it. And now can El Paso be more cutting? Jerome breaks a line. Now the ball goes back and that was the story of the first half. It's forward Madison FC put on a master class. How to play a cup game on the road. Defend calmly with numbers. Attack efficiently. 
Take advantage of your opportunities. Tobin there, with a little bit of a mistake. Omar Salgado still an option off the bench for El Paso. Their first ever signing in the franchise's history. A local, who just 25 years old, has played in some of the best teams on the continent, in some of the best leagues in North America. And another free kick coming up here. This time Gebhard knocked down. time US lower division stalwart for Miami FC Jacksonville Armada and Ottawa Fury spent last year with FC Cincinnati in their final year in USL and now helping another team make their debut and he serves this one in flicked on at the near post still alive in the box for El Paso and that shot's blocked Yuma hit it through a crowd. Not sure if Silvestre would have known a whole lot about it. And what have we seen in this game? As Toyama just offside, but how good has forward Madison been on the counterattack? Well, they haven't lost a step in this second half. This is a great ball in by Ryan. Good defensive play here to make sure, because it looks like this one could have found the back of the net. But Ford Madison holds their ground and then they're off and running another great counterattack. That was a really close call in terms of being offside. But they're just still finding pockets of space and it's those good entry passes into the strikers that are so crisp, allowing them to be so potent on the attack. And at, at this point in time, I feel like El Paso though, they've committed numbers forward and you know those players for Madison are gonna bump off that back line and look to keep possession and ignite that tack. So stay with them, get tight. They're allowing them to turn and then play those through balls. They're lucky that they got caught offside because otherwise that's 1v1 with the goalkeeper. And you talk about some of the top coaches in the world, Pep Guardiola always talks about four to five seconds when you lose possession, where you counter press hard, you stay in the other team's face, not just to win the ball back, but so it's not easy to go and counter the other way if you've committed numbers. Now you're in a situation for El Paso where you need goals, so you need to stay high anyway. It'll be interesting to see how they react here. And great point because you and I were talking at halftime and as, as good as Ford Madison has been in terms of their efficiency with their passes and breaking down El Paso's defense, really El Paso hasn't employed any sort of real high pressure or counter pressure. They've allowed them to get out. They allow them to find those players and then bounce it and then they're off and running. This forward Madison team right now, a great mix of youth, You've got guys in the starting lineup like Schneider on the ball, a local Russell, just 25 years old, and Diaz, 24 years old at right back. But then you've got that central midfield with the U.S. soccer legend and J.C. Banks, 29 years old. He's won championships in USL, in NASL. And you partner him in that midfield with Nunez and Michad, and you've got that composure the center of the park when things get bad when things get hectic that right now are just cutting this El Paso team up on defense Diaz with the win smart switch in the field to Toyama and coming into this game we knew that the midfield would be critical that's where this game could be won and lost and that's been the difference here is Ford Madison all three of their players getting involved, getting on the ball, helping out when needed, not only in the attack, getting numbers forward, but also getting numbers behind and really just being the anchor in that team to the movement and the success. And we okay. haven't seen that on the El Paso side. We've seen Toyama just get taken out now twice in this game. Once from Partida, that time from Yuma. And as we said in the first half, picked up a red card in league play this weekend against New Mexico. So he will be suspended for the next 
USL Championship game. He gets a run out here in this one. And for Daryl Shore, you love to win. It's the most important thing. But you love to be right as well. And as you said, that midfield battle was where he felt like there was space. He knew it was going to be tough, but he felt like there was space around Ryan who gets isolated very often. And if they can cut off the easy passing angle for him defensively, when they pick the ball up, they'll have chances. That's exactly what we've seen in this game. I mean, he's executed his game plan to a T. And he knew having, if they could get on the ball and win the ball quicker, he felt his midfielder was quicker than this El Paso's midfield and they could get after him in those ways too. And as you just mentioned on the outside of Ryan, they have had some success pulling him out and then finding those space in front of that back line. Maybe we should ask Daryl Shore who's gonna win the Women's World Cup this <laughs> summer. Call could him. Could go hit up, hit up a Monaco <laughs> casino and, and see what's gonna happen. Daryl Shore has been Nostradamus so far in this one. Silvestre blasts this one long. Once again, forward Madison. They jump on the ball. They have been efficient and dangerous. Currently sitting above the playoff line for the first time in USL League One this season. They're in fourth place. And the attack has been good today. Their defense, six goals conceded all of 2019 so far. That's good for third in the entire USL League One. So this is their bread and butter. Protecting that back has been what they've been good at. And they've got two goals now to sit on in this second half. Plus one goal differential. Cross play so far. They've got South Georgia Tormenta coming up this weekend. 7 p.m. Central time. So if you are in the Madison area, I am very jealous of you because I would love to go to my Madison home game at Breeze Stevens Field. They've got some big games coming up. They head to North Texas after that who are flying high. Five wins in five games at the top of USL League One. And then a home game against Hertha Berlin of the Bundesliga in a friendly. Look at where this sport is right now in this country, Laura. You went from a handful of professional sides in the entire country to 36 teams at the USL Championship, 22 in MLS, 10 now in USL League One, and you've got Bundesliga sides playing friendlies in Madison, Wisconsin. It is, it is remarkable, and just the the level and anytime you turn on the TV, you can find a soccer match. I remember growing up and it was like basically Manchester United was on TV and that was it. <laughs> lucky for me, I was a huge Paul, Paul Spoles fan. I was so. going to say, at least it wasn't the post or Alex Ferguson <laughs> error. It'd be painful just watching David Moyes Manchester uh, United games over and over. Yeah, seriously, goodness gracious with them. But yeah, it is. What a what a fun time for football in, in the U.S. now and just the availability so many unique atmospheres, cultures, setups. Forward Madison FC have been a delight to add to this, as has El Paso Locomotive. The energy, the environment around their match against New Mexico this weekend, something you couldn't find anywhere in the U.S. And now you've got regional rivalries with so many teams. And it's been great for the U.S. Open Cup. So many games for teams play so close to each other right now orange county soccer club is kicking off against orange county <laughs> football club over on espn plus you can go over and watch that one if you want but i wouldn't leave us too early as paulo jr turns on this strike and he gets Lori Lindsay on her feet <laughs> you could see that one line up for him and we've talked about how good they've been today on playing it into the strikers, bouncing it, and just quick one-twos. That's all they're doing. That's why we're not seeing a ton of their percentage in terms of possession. It's just quick and dynamic going forward and Paulo Jr. Turn, turning and trying to take one himself. A performance Diego Simeone himself would give a little clap for. Yes, absolutely. It's been a fun one so far. Forward Madison FC, one of the best performances we have seen in 
the U.S. Open Cup so far here in 2019. They've still got a lot of time left. Castellanos coming on here. Headed away by Russell. And now Kiffy. And we saw Kiffy flying forward the first 10 minutes of this game. Acres of space out left. And that hasn't been the case since then. As Kisavetter goes to ground. And wave of play on here for Marco Vega. And El Paso now prodding a little bit more. As Kiffy on the through ball. It's a little too long. Brian Silvestre, one of the former U.S. Youth Internationals on the field here. The current U.S. men's national team is starting to gear up for the Gold Cup. They get ready by facing off against Jamaica in Washington, D.C. on June 5th and Venezuela in Cincinnati on June 9th. For tickets, visit ussoccer.com. It'll be interesting to see what that U.S. lineup looks like for the Gold Cup. A number of injuries to some of the players who you thought would star for Greg Berhalter's side. As Funda comes flying out there, DeAndre Yedlin getting surgery, question marks around Weston McKinney and Tyler Adams as well for the Gold Cup. As U.S. Soccer looks to turn the page in this, Lori, what we've seen over the last two days in Open Cup is a big part of the future for U.S. Soccer. It's just more players getting the opportunity to challenge themselves at a high level in professional environments because how many players fall through the gaps in the past and now you get an opportunity to latch on and build your career. And what, what's amazing, and here's another look at this attempt for El Paso, but again, it's the cover that Ford Madison has on the defense is keeping any threats out of at bay. But you're right, I mean, when you look around, and, and what's exciting is just the variety and the different styles of play, too. So there's hidden gems in all of these teams. The, the way that these coaches are coming out and putting teams out in the field and implementing their style looks vastly different. I mean, from an earlier game to this game, I mean, night and day, right? And so it's exciting to see how you can break down teams employing different styles and how teams match up with one another. I mean, corner kick lofted in. Partita challenging Schneider flicks it on you're absolutely right and when you look at what we're seeing from these two teams compared to the Las Vegas lights last night in Cal FC the way they've built their roster the style that they want to play the more players you get playing in a comfortable style under coaches that believe in them the better this sport will be two more substitutions coming up we didn't think we'd have to wait too long based on the scoreline Omar Salgado the first ever signing in El Paso Locomotive FC history, a native of El Paso. A distinguished career already at just 25 years old. He comes on up top in, play, in place of Gebhard. And the second substitution here is Brian Rebellion comes on as well for this El Paso Locomotive team. Rebellion. Colombian native making his third U.S. Open Cup appearance of his career. El Paso now have made all three of their substitutions as we enter the final 30 minutes of this one. Unless El Paso can find a moment of brilliance at some point. So a complete overhaul of the attack here, Lori, and you can see Coach Lowry knows how dire this situation is. Well, you're getting to the point where you really have to start committing numbers forward, only leaving a few players back, still trying to play your game, and don't just give the ball away easily, but can you pick and choose your times, but you gotta start committing, you gotta up the energy, and I like this substitution to get Rebellion in. I mean, you and I were talking earlier too, Herrera, we felt like even Partida, and you could even put C Castellanos in there. 
This one's open on the far post. Kisavetter furious with Marco Vega. And Vega calmly points to the goal, goal kick. And, and this is where Madison can do better, but they can also grow as a team, right? Is because you're up 2-0, there's still 25 plus minutes to play, and you need to make sure you don't let up. You need to close this game out and to allow players, f two free players on the back end of that goal, potentially get a free header is gonna cost you if you're not careful. Omar Salgado's been on the books with Chivas, with Tigres, with Vancouver, some of the biggest clubs on this continent. And he gets that special opportunity to welcome a new club into the professional rank ranks in his home city of El Paso. Spent last year with the Las Vegas Lights, had three goals in USL championship play. Struggled with injuries on that team. Has yet to score here for El Paso in the short time that they've been a team. This would be a huge moment for him to get his first goal. It's been a dream start in this one for forward Madison FC. On the road against El Paso. A 19th minute goal from Toyama set up by Paulo Jr. and then a 26th minute goal by Diaz set up by Toyama. Madison has played it to perfection since then. And a dangerous moment there for El Paso. Kiffy now still trying to play out through Navarro, only as far as Banks. And right now, El Paso in trouble. Toyama, body sliding around for El Paso. Finally, Ryan wins the tackle. And just there we saw Nunez yelling at his teammate saying, cut that out. There's no point in getting involved in any sort of scuffle there in the midfield you're up 2-0 just calm down get behind the ball keep your composure that's exactly what you want to see from a, a veteran player there in the midfield who's had the the game that he's had too Silvestre goes long Castellanos trying to find some space. Yuma now pushing up a little bit higher, playing that central midfield. Yuma gonna play his last game for a week at least here. He's got that red card versus New Mexico. He's been here in the US now for four years. Played professionally for most of his career with Vallecano. So came over to help start Rio OKC when the Viacano ownership group decided to expand to the United States. And has stayed in the US since the collapse of that squad. Ended up playing in Jacksonville for coach Mark Lowry in 2018. And he played two US Open Cup games and now here making his ninth start of 2019 for this El Paso locomotive side. He's been one of the guys we've seen frustrated, actively frustrated in this game with his teammates, with the way the ball has bounced, different moments. And right now this El Paso side can't seem to find the combination lock for this forward Madison back line. And uh, getting his first start of the year. Nothing he could do about the two goals he's given up. Yuma now 
now sliding into that midfield. And just look at the numbers that Ford Madison has around the ball. And as soon as they try to switch it, they'll allow this to happen. But then you see right away, they're shifting quickly, getting numbers around. And they have been so good at that for these first 70 minutes. And it's really led to their goals. And that was what Coach Shore wanted to avoid, getting sucked in and then allowing this team to cycle the ball quickly as Mark Lowry's team did so well in Jacksonville. Salgado comes wide now. He puts the cross in, knocked away. At the top of the six there by Russell. And well done, good team defense, always cover there. Salgado wins it, shows his skill, his power. Still alive in the middle of the box, Castellanos wins that first header. And then finally cleared away by Diaz. Space here for Castellanos, his shot always rising. Salgado bringing a little bit of spark already, just with his physical ability. You can see here on the tackle and then the cross. And you can see his height and his athleticism. And that's a great ball in, just no one there. Ford Madison does a good job of clearing this one. And that's where you'd like to see a kiss of better be that other option when Salgado floats out wide from his center forward spot to find a runner on the inside. Dangerous header back there from Ryan and makes it all the way to fund his hands. Navarro. And now Madison puts the pressure on. Jerome here, able to play through it. Can't keep it in play. And that's been the difference right there. When Madison extends their lines, just not the quality from El Paso to make that killer pass to make them pay for it. And it's just the decision making as well. They're either looking to go over, play a long ball over the top that's not quite on, and we see that sailing out of bounds, or as you mentioned, just not the quality of pass to the right foot to allow them to get numbers around the ball and then start to have better possession in a more attacking oriented place on the field. You see Toyama there saying to Revolone, relax, I've already gotten taken out twice in this game. You just came on the field. I don't need a third one. For some reason, he's got a target on his back. It might be the goal and the assist. A hard drive there, spilled by Funda, and then he comes out to take it. What an attempt by Sinclair Russell the left center back who saw Funda maybe not paying attention and just put his foot through it. Well, I mean, he just gets enough pace on this too and there's enough bend that, oh, it's Nunez. Of course it was Nunez. Of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Makes <laughs> a lot more game, sense yeah, now. Yeah, exactly, but enough spin, enough pace to at least put Forda under some trouble there and at least cough up the rebound. Turnover from Banks. And Salgado almost breaks through. You think it's it's got to be a moment like that to get this El Paso team back in it. A mistake, maybe a gift of some sort to get El Paso some energy. You think if they get one at home with the quality they have in possession, they'll put pressure on this forward Madison team over these last few minutes. But right now, you can't really figure out who will step up and provide that first goal. And Salgado's done a good job since he's been on, but you just get the feeling once they get into that final third, they're starting to approach that time where it's they're trying to force it to happen. A player's trying to take it, a couple players on themselves instead of just playing the simple ball. Can you keep possession even outside their box and then force Ford Madison out and find those little pockets of space in there to slip balls through? Because right now it's a forced opportunity. It's a shot out wide, not a good look from a service. Can they commit and have better opportunities in that final third? Still plenty of time. Salgado posting up Schneider there. And we know Salgado has that size to play center forward, but has the speed and skill as well to play out wide. It's one of the things that makes him such a threat to opposition teams. Partida now. 
Gonna create something, Castellanos in a battle. Banks comes away the winner. He goes down behind the play and then saw his feet come out a little. And Partita starting a little bit of a tussle behind the ball. And Richie Ryan colliding on the ball. So two fights going on at the same time. Michaud furious with Richie Ryan for his tackle attempt in possession. But look at Banks. He gets thrown down here by Partita and then kicks out a little bit behind the play as Michaud's running away. And this is starts to be frustration setting in for El Paso. And then Ford Madison not happy and reacting to that too. And it's again, both of these teams have a little bit of a different look right now. I mean, if you're Ford Madison, you're in a good position to advance. Last thing you want to do is lose any players. So Marco Vega now after a conversation with his assistant referee, he's got some big decisions to make. He's got to deal with the first situation. And a yellow card coming to James Kiffey, who I think ran into the play afterwards. We'll see where other yellow cards are coming as well for Marco Vega. As he talks to his staff. So the only yellow card here is someone who wasn't actually involved in the initial scenario. And James Kiffey, which probably is as good as you get for these two teams. And it looked like it was a dangerous play there from Banks as he kicked his foot out, as well as from Castellanos throwing him to the ground. And, and as I was saying, it's like that's the best case scenario for both of these teams because if you're Ford Madison, last thing you want is a player out. If the scoreline says this 2 0 and you advance the next round. You don't want to be losing any players after this spectacular performance you put on this first 75 minutes. And then El Paso, last thing you want to do is get in yellow card trouble or or even get a red card and you're facing a, trying to scramble and get back into this game playing down a man. Beautiful interchange once again. Forward Madison FC breaks through. And what a goal. The flock is flying from Madison to Texas. Forward Madison FC on the road in the second round of the U.S. Open Cup. Blowing out USL Championship opposition in El Paso. And you've got to think this is the one that puts this game away. We've seen this all game, little quick one-twos, playing it up top, bouncing it back, getting runners through. This time it's Mashad. He's been so successful on the dribble, getting into that box all game. Here he is, gets on the end of this, and then just cool and calm in front of the goal, slots this pass to Florida. Jeff Mashad's been phenomenal, but how good has Paulo Jr. been with limited touches as center forward he has set up two of the goals today. Almost got one for himself as well. He has been brilliant. And he's just been so good with his back to goal, just linking up play, not trying to do too much. He's threatening in the back line every once in a while to get in behind, but for the most part, just linking up, doing his part, allowing for those attacking midfielders to make run through, whether it's off the ball or as we've seen a number of times from Mashad on the ball, making those runs through, dribbling and causing trouble with his skill. They will show this game in tactic sessions of how to win on the road. How to win in one game knockout competitions. It has been perfection for 78 minutes for forward Madison. As this one lands on the far post, there was two El Paso players crashing and Castellanos just could not get his foot around it. And this has got to be in the back of the net. A good little play. One of the best plays that we've seen of this game. Chipped ball in. All you have to do is put this on frame and it's in the back of the net. You don't need to put pace on it. No communication there. Should have been called off the ball. If not, just put your head down, get on it. This guy gets underneath it and sends that over the crossbar though. That's really been the night, story of the night for El Paso. A few close attempts, but can't make anything or get anything going. And now Toyama picks up a yellow card. 
and he's got to be a little frustrated. He has gotten a lot of physical abuse in his direction in this game. It hasn't led to yellow cards. Now he picks up a yellow card here. That right arm as he tries to hold off Rebellion. They are dancing and partying in Madison, Wisconsin. Shout out to everyone in the flock enjoying this one at the Flamboyant Team Store as they watch their team go on the road for a second straight week in U.S. Open Cup action and get a win, a giant collision between Ryan and Russell. And these are the moments, if you're Madison right now, where you have to stay under control with a 3-0 lead. And I love this step in here by Russell. Again, we talked about closing spaces, the back line, not allowing those strikers for El Paso to turn. He's put ply in pressure, but I agree with you, David. Just stay calm. There's no need to be making major fouls or reacting to anything that El Paso is doing. You have a major lead here, 10 plus minutes to go. Shut out the game with all 11 men. The U.S. Women's National Team takes on Mexico May 26th in Harrison, New Jersey in the send-off series finale. For tickets, visit ussoccer.com or watch it live on ESPN and the ESPN app. That's going to be a fun one. Regional rivalry. That one's starting to grow as Mexico comes on in leaps and bounds. It used to be just on the men's side where it was a rivalry. So it was a training game for the U.S. Women's National Team. Now it's starting to get competitive. Yeah, and unfortunate that Mexico won't be in the World Cup this year. Jamaica takes their place. But at the same time, we want to see how Mexico is going to come out. They're going to have to start to rebuild their team, revamp that program. It's a disappointment to miss it on this World Cup. What a story Jamaica has been in qualifying and will be in the World Cup finals. What a story we've had here from forward Madison. FC is Don Smart's down behind the play, holding his ankle. Daryl Shore still yet to make a substitution. He's got three available to him. You gotta think he'll start to think about rotation. He's got South Georgia Tormenta coming up this weekend. There will be rest now in terms of open cup play. As you see there, a little bit on the ankle from Castellanos. There will be a little bit of rest in terms of midweek action as the next round of the U.S. Open Cup coming up the week of May 28th. And for forward Madison FC, they've shown how to win on the road and they're going to have to continue to do it because they will be traveling to either St. Louis FC or the Des Moines Menace in their next game. Three Open Cup games all on the road if this one holds. But if any team's capable of getting through it, it's this Mingo squad. And this has been just a fantastic team performance from the first whistle all the way to the 82nd minute we're in right now. And really just everyone playing the role, an important role. If you're gonna be playing, if you're gonna be playing games on the road, this is how you wanna be showing up with confidence, knowing that you can steal goals, that you can put your stamp on the game, and you can dictate the tempo even if you're not playing at home. This is everything the Open Cup is about. Right now, in extra time, the Des Moines men is hanging toe-to-toe, 1-1 -toe, with St. Louis FC. Des Moines Menace of USL League Two against St. Louis FC from the USL Championship, the second best team right now in the Eastern Conference of the USL Championship. What a great Midwest rivalry that game is. As it looks like right now, forward Madison FC will be matching up on the road against the winner of that one. Yellow card coming out here. 
three yellow cards accumulated throughout this tournament. Leads to a suspension in the next game. Of course, any red card, immediate suspension for the next game. If you are red carded or pick up three and your team's out in their next game, that suspension carries over to 2020. You are still in. I believe Cuauhtémoc Blanco is still technically suspended from the U.S. Open Cup, and he's 51 years old and governor of a state in <laughs> Mexico. Clint Dempsey might be suspended still <laughs> as well. This tournament is a beautiful thing, unique, but U.S. soccer to its core. As Ryan floats this one, and it bounces. And the best look of the game falls to the man you want it to in Jerome Kiesewetter on that far side, and he just could not make contact. Another brilliant ball in there from Ryan, who whips it in. And again, there's just too many opportunities that are missed by El Paso. All you have to do is play this back where it's coming from, diagonal. You have Sylvester going the wrong way, played across the goal into the back of the net. Just doesn't make good contact on it. So first substitution of the game coming up. That man deserves the rest he's gonna get. Jiro Toyama comes off his first goal and his first assist in his Madison career as Brian Vement comes on. The Waterloo, Illinois native who made the Jacksonville Armada as a walk-on open tryout last year. Makes his first appearance for this Madison side in his career. Let's give props one more time to Daryl Shore. <laughs> God, he made one big decision since we spoke to him yesterday. He said, I'm not sure he's going to get the start on that wing. He goes with Toyama. He felt like his speed could be a factor, and he was fantastic today. Getting up and down that right-hand side. And then also credit to Nunez, another player that he said he's going to need to get into the, involved in the game, work his way in, and he did that just from the opening whistle, getting on the ball, dictating tempo, finding himself forward in a higher position at times as well, slowing the pace down when needed, but also getting involved in those quick counterattacks. Nineteenth minute goal from Toyama, set up by Paulo Jr. Toyama then played assist man himself just seven minutes later. And the first career goal for Christian Diaz. And then what looks like the final nail in the coffin from Mishad, created by who else but Paulo Jr in the 76th minute. Kiffy with the in-swinger. Floated to the far post. And that has been the one spot that Madison has looked susceptible is on set pieces when that ball beats the first man we saw it bounce in the first half inside the six. We've seen two or three opportunities here in the second half be open. That seems to be what you would think would be one of the keys Coach Shore is going to work on in training for the rest of the week. That and then also on the attacking side, being a little bit more deceptive and potent in their attack in terms of set pieces as well. Because we've seen in these games and they're susceptible on one side but then also giving that to the other team on the other end and just making sure they've been so precise in their delivery throughout this game in the run of play. Can they do that and be even have another variety in their attack and be dangerous on the set pieces? That's just going to elevate this team and who knows what they'll be capable of. Kiffy here well, to take another corner kick. He puts that one on the near post. Salgado felt like the start of that play, he had earned a penalty kick. No agreement, though, from Marco Vega, who's had some testy moments to deal with here in the second half. So it looks like right now Memphis 901 FC is going to go through with a win over New York Red Bulls U23s. 
Orange County SC FC rivalry match. Kicking off right now, the Birmingham Legion getting a 4-1 win for their first ever US Open Cup victory in their inaugural season. One of the teams along with these two sides that have helped make this the biggest tournament ever with the most professional sides in US Open Cup history, 106 years of history. And now, Howard Madison FC have a little bit of US Open Cup to put into their history books. And those fans will be talking about this game for a very long time. <laughs> this has just been a dominant performance from top to bottom, I and mean, we can't say enough about it. On both sides of the ball, you could make the argument they didn't even allow El Paso to, to get involved in this game. The only reason why El Paso has had any looks on goal is if they weren't marked up Madison on the set pieces that you talked about in the far post. Going the other way now. Bement, the substitute, trying to go end to end there. And the big save by Funda. Smart cuts back. Time in the box now. He can't keep possession. And a foul will go against Don Smart. Well, great run by the substitute, Bement. But even better save there by Forda. He does a good job of using his foot, getting it out there, going to ground. You got to give some credit there to Meshach Jerome. He didn't quit on the play, which cuts Bement's angle. Means he has to go to his right, feels that player on his back. Makes that save a little bit easier from Funda. Jerome cutting off that angle and then Funda coming out, closing that angle. It'll be a minimum of three minutes of stoppage time here for this one. It won't matter. Madison forward, excuse me, forward Madison FC. They have gone. Flamingo on this one, they have taken care of business on the road for the second straight time in Open Cup play. Right now, St. Louis FC in Des Moines men is headed into a second extra time period, the 105th minute, still locked in at 1-1. Des Moines men is playing man down in that one against USL Championship opposition. FC Denver trailing right now, the last amateur team to play today. Right now, one amateur team going through to the third round in the Florida Soccer Soldiers. Right now, one USL League Two team going through to the second round. In Madison, in forward Madison FC, Zaire Bartley comes on in place of Don Smart. You know the weapon that Don Smart is, but he almost didn't have to be in this game. He took attention, was quick to get the ball off his foot and allow that ball to be swung to Toyama, who created the danger along with Mishad. Salgado now flying into the attack. Banks almost pulled him down from behind. Salgado has come on and has been furious. And now Yuma comes in to play peacekeeper slash yell at other players. And if you are forward Madison, unnecessary right now. A player of JC Banks experience, don't drag a player down when you're leading 3-0 in stoppage time. And now for these Flamingo players, get away from the ball. Back off, get away, regroup. Somebody calm your players down. There is no reason to be involved in this at all. And you understand the frustration on El Paso's side, down 3-0, no way to come back from this deficit. But on the flip side, if you're Ford Madison, you've put together a stellar team performance. You're excited about this play. Back off, close out the game. That is a sign of a mature team just to settle down. Don't get involved in any of this nonsense. One thing I wanted to say about your point about Smart, who's just 
substituted off this field, though, is sometimes that's all you need. When you have some other players that are finding the magic or out there having a lot of joy on the ball, all you need is somebody to play simple, bounce balls off of it. And a lot of times that goes unnoticed and is not as... We don't praise that as much, but what a phenomenal performance from him just to realize his role in tonight's game, that he can be just as effective by bouncing balls, playing simple. And that man, Jeff Michaud, he had a perfect game in midfield. Didn't get assist on the second goal. He should have, though. It was his clip ball through after his run. He was everywhere for this team and ended up getting the final goal. All of those three midfielders for Ford Madison would be the player of the game, in my opinion. Right now, forward Madison FC will, it looks like, move on to the third round of the U.S. Open Cup, the only USL League One.